Hey there, fellow constructors, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Vintage Story. Episode 88, Furnace Building. Yeah, I absolutely love that aesthetic. So if we can't center these lanterns and maybe... What is this? Two from the side. Right here. Maybe that's enough light to keep the drifters at bay? The, f the front, actually, right here, probably needs another lantern. But that should do. Like, those three lanterns should definitely illuminate this room enough so that it's not a, uh, a monster spawning dungeon. That's hot enough. So we're down to very little charcoal, but that's going to change soon. Um, very little brown coal. There's really not a, much of a point to have bauxite that isn't pulverized, but since we're using the mechanical power for the health hammer, I'm just going to leave it alone. I have the candles on me, so let's get uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, clear glass. I wonder if the guide will say what hares eat. Good. I'm glad this survival guidebook tells me... Um, very useful information. There, most of the guidebook is like pretty good, but then there's some parts of the guidebook that are just like, ha, you wanted intel? Nope. <laughs> like if I wanted to look up a uh, pit kiln, maybe it actually tells me. Kiln. Is there a pit kiln guide? I don't need to pause the game for that. Maybe not. Maybe it's in the starter guide? Maybe not. Yeah, there's like some things that are just either hard to find or simply missing. Um, like how much stuff I could put in a pit kiln, right? Like what the ratios are, you know, just simple things like that. That would be nice to have in a in the guide. They tell you how to do a pit kiln and clay forming? Okay, so if we look at the clay forming guide. Pit kilns. One by one by one hole, then dry glass, sticks, and firewood. Uh, it, peat and coal can be used instead. Ignite. Um, yeah, it doesn't tell you... It doesn't really tell you ratios or anything. It just tells you the very, very basics. Which is what I thought it did. And which is also the problem that I was saying. It doesn't tell you how much of anything. It's just like, well, this is like, vaguely how to do it. Good luck. Alright, so it should be light enough down here. Oh, and hey, look! Whoops. I can see my charcoal. So... I'll be digging that up in a sec. So I have another lantern. That's pretty well illuminated. Is there any other dark spots in the base? Maybe. Right there. I think eventually what I'm going to do is drop uh, columns so that this looks like actually functional part of the base. But it's just nice to have like windows that illuminate. It's a, it's a spare, um, it is a spare, uh, thing that I have there. Right, so I don't, it doesn't really need to, I can always pull it up and change the position. 
if I need to. But I think, without using mods, I think I am now... Oh, and the uh, Meteoric Iron is now done. Sweet. I think we. I'm finally at a point where I don't have any dark spots in the base. So I will. I have not added a mod yet in this series so far, but I'm going to do one now just to show you. And then I'll disable it. It's very, very easy to add mods in the game. And here's a spawn highlighter mod. And what that spawn highlighter mod is will just show you where drifters can spawn. Which makes it very, very easy to tell, like, oh, I don't have good light level here. Or, oh, it's fine. Uh, so I think the command, yeah, the command was control L once you have the mod installed. So anywhere green is blocked by light level. And I can run around the base and just look for red spots. Red spots indicate that the light level is not sufficient and that drifters could spawn. So it's a, right, like drifters can spawn there because it's dark. They can't spawn anywhere back here. Can't spawn there. So there are some dark spots. There are some dark spots up here in the kitchen. So using this mod, I can just be like, all right, got some dark spots. I'll put a lantern here. And here. Oh, there's still a dark spot right there. So like I could hypothetically like stick a slab there or some blocker to prevent it from spawning. Kind of wondering. No, it's... Huh. thought it would be symmetrical. Oh, maybe, maybe it's not centered. But yeah, so if I wanted to stop it spawning there, I could just, you know, put light there or something. Like let's say I put one lantern here, and one lantern there, and then pull this one back a little, and then pull this one forward. So it's just a mod to help you, like, protect your home. Which... It's, it's, it's a very powerful tool that, like, you know, is kind of annoying to do without it. And then if I go on the roof, as you can see, there's no valid spots because they're all slabs at the correct height. Uh, there's probably valid, well, no, I mean, it's illuminated up there with a lantern, so it's probably not even a valid spot up there. So there is a, there is a spot here that is a valid spawn. But with that new lantern there, everything out back here is illuminated. So now I would say it's official. There's no longer like valid spots anywhere in this base for drifters to mess with me. And I can turn off the overlay. I'll just leave the mod enabled because it doesn't do anything with the overlay off. But, uh... All right. Current priority now is to make new tools and then go iron mining. I don't want the um, health hammer arm to be in my face while I work on this. Are you still plenty hot? Uh, actually, you know what? They're cooling. I'm gonna heat them back up. If I was, if I timed everything perfectly right as the bloomery finished, they might have been hot enough to start working. Uh, so new tools. Let's think about this. I think an axe would be good, a shovel would be good. Uh, I do have a backup knife. Granted, it's a bronze, tin bronze knife, but I do have a backup knife. A pick, two picks. So two picks, an axe, and a shovel. So I'm, I'm only going to do four 
of the ingots of all the ingots that I currently have. Oh, and the scythe. So maybe I'll do six. I'll do like a hammer and a scythe. So let's do the axe heads now. And making the tools out of meteoric iron kind of means that like I'm not going to need new tools for a while. As, me as long as I don't like die with them and lose them. Meteoric iron is a, a very high durability material. There's one. Oops. Yeah. It's fine. Say what out loud? The snow on the anvil is back? Yep. It's so that I, uh, you know... I don't cook myself from all this hot metal. I've got like a nice cooling source. I have cold feet. <laughs> oh, saying that at least, I, you know, as long as I don't die. Yeah. Probably shouldn't have said that pit out loud. Now it means I'm going to die. So we've got two picks. My prostrum looks to be pretty good HP. So we're going to do a scythe head. And an axe head. Actually, Scythe Head and Axe Head... No, I should get a shovel, too. I probably don't need a shovel. Just going iron mining. I'm not going to use up a shovel that quickly. So maybe I'll, I'll do six instead of four. Six new tools. looks like a rifle stock. Oops. The only un un uncorrect uh, correctable errors is the uh, the split. Yeah, everything else you can just kind of fix. I feel like the hammerhead on the anvil is so much larger than the ham the hammerhead like near hand. That was also funny that it's just like a basic, just, you know, cube or whatever. Uh, so that's four tools. So the shovel and the axe. It has a magical ability to shrink. I mean, maybe it has different properties in this world than we're used to. Because, you know, 
technically, it, when it's hot and then cools down, it should shrink. Maybe not to the degree that uh, the game shows, though. Oh, uh, all the pick cones are done, too. So I can start a new... So before I leave, I ought to um, start new refractory kilns, start new charcoal, and then go iron mining. And then I'm going to have more or less like all the materials that I need to really uh, be well set up. Oryx Bane, did I thank you for the gifted subs? I hope I did. My brain is like, I am a bit in a brain fog. And if I didn't, I apologize. X, X. Keep a uh, stack of sticks in that forge box or kiln box. Yeah, it seems pretty reasonable to me. Bank base. Full body scratches. Oh, like this. Thank you for the sub. Yoda's like, wait, what's going on? Stop touching me. Do -do 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 Too bad, Yoda. You were getting pets. That's the axe head. Nope, that's the ingot. Axe head. And last but not least, the shovel. I'm really bad at finding the tools, even though the shovel head looks completely exactly what it's you know what a shovel head would look like. Some of the, some of the um, blacksmithing stuff looks kind of vaguely like it should, but the shovel is like spot on pixel art, and still I struggle to find it. Also, uh, I made no mistakes. No, oops. Well, right as I say that, I tried to put the stick on the wrong side. Uh, yeah, that all worked out. So where I'm going, I do not need hammers. These hammers are just like spare. Uh, there's just no way I'm going to use up an entire meteoric pick. My backpack would fill way before that would be possible. To save space, I am going to put my old knife um, away. Because I don't need, I don't think I'm going to break a knife on this trip. And I don't need an extra knife. Uh, I'm going to hold on to that because now. Let's put this away. This way. All right, let's. Um, let's go ahead and get this all squared up. So current priority now is fire up a new run of charcoal and refract uh, ref bricks. I'm just going to call it ref bricks. I think by the time I, I get the charcoal kiln going, uh, that last pit kiln will probably be done. So, um, I am going to make the grates first because we don't need many of them. These uh, refractory brick gratings. We only need six. I think. I think honestly you need really. So it says six. I think nine is kind of like the nice amount to have. If I recall. I could be recalling incorrectly. But I believe when I've done this in the past. I've done nine. And it's nicer. Oh that's not what I meant to do. So this is the sort of blueprint for everything. 
And I think the reason I say nine is you can put it right beneath the coffin section as well. Um, but it's really hard for me to visualize any of this stuff until I start to actually make full-on refractory blocks. Which would be... Like this. 16 blocks. And 30 blocks. So we need uh, 53 blocks total. So I'm, I'm actually pretty close. I'm more than halfway there. So filling up the remaining... Um, the remaining kilns and getting them fired up is... Is uh, what's left. Also get the bloomeries back. So that I have bloomeries ready for iron when I come home. With the Hall of Iron. about I know it's not written above my head but how about we also just put down some refractor bricks so I can start to show you the process um, so in most almost all of these sort of shadow positions is going to be refractory brick placements so some of them like here, I can't place a brick unless there's something physical there. So it also helps to have just like cobblestone as filler. It's not necessarily required for the structure, but it's hard to place all the bricks in place without the cobblestone. Um, one could make the argument of just like, oh, you know, don't bother with that. Just, um, just, uh, you know, put the bricks down and then remove the bricks. But uh, there is a disadvantage of doing that as after you do a run of um, after you do a run of steel some of your refractor bricks will break and you know it's just kind of nice to be able to fill out the shell instantly in my opinion dirt is faster but dirt is ugly nerds ugly I don't think I need to convince you of that. And I'm going to place one incorrectly, too, just to show you what that looks like. So anything placed incorrectly, uh, oops, that's not what I meant to do, will show up in a different color. So obviously this cobblestone is wrong, and structure is not complete. 49 blocks are missing or wrong. So the granite cobblestone is now shaded uh, red because it is an incorrect place. Because the blueprint wants refractory, because obviously this whole structure is uh, ref refractory design. So the you'll get feedback from the tooltip um, telling you, you know, X, Y, Z, etc. Is, is wrong, which is nice. So now it should be 37 is missing a row, right? And and that's really... Oh, uh, apparently this is wrong? Is that... Oh, uh, I think that's my iron door. I think the, the whole uh, coffin is backwards. So I'll have to fix that, won't I? And this is why the... Floating bird print is really, really nice to have. Because I had no idea that this is where the iron door was supposed to be until just now. I mean, I could leave it and, like, build this backwards, but I don't really want to do that. So, knowing that that is uh, backwards, let's um, have a place to place our furnace. Uh, oops. Correctly. 
And fortunately, like, everything gets refunded. Is this correct? Yes. This is correct. So now the you can see the the gray tinted, uh, the gray tint indicates the iron door. I at least I hope. I've not necessarily shown that I'm the best refractory maker. Oh, uh, one um, one way to do it is just to check. So forty one missing or wrong, and then to put the door here and then check again, thirty nine missing or wrong. So the door is in the correct spot now. I've confirmed that because I it takes up two two blocks and um, the blueprint told me it's right. And I'm out of building materials, but I am 29 blocks away from being done. Uh, so let's put the grating in below. So I believe the grating wants to be here. So, see if that came down by six. Nope. Two of them are wrong. This is wrong. Does it want solid blocks there? Oh, I think it does. Yeah, it does want solid blocks. Um, I tend to... Oh, it wants grading here. Okay, so that should be... 23. Just so that we're building bottom up. Uh, I'm going to remove some of these known to be correct blocks. Anyway, to put them here. I think it's nice. Alright, so 23. 23 left. That's it. And um, generally what I do is I then build like catwalks all the way around up top because as you can see it's kind of a vertical structure and that allows you to maintain it uh, when things break between uh, between cementation cycles certainly not necessary but it's like kind of nice to do maybe All right, so that is set up. Let's get, oh, and the other bricks. I have two more blocks, so we're 21 away. So this is sort of my refractory box, I think is kind of obvious. So let's grab the unfired. Oh, also, now that everything is um, um, not on fire, as you can see, there's no um, drifter spots down here. I just toggled on the um, the overlay. And as I say that, I hear drifters, like, next to me. Of course. We'll have four unfired blocks, that's fine. The algorithm sent you here? I was not aware that uh, Twitch had an algorithm. In fact, uh, it doesn't, but, but welcome, all the same. Where's my lantern? Uh, I, don't know, I, I forget. <laughs> Crimson Rust, thanks for the gifted subs. Where is my lantern? What is missing for level two or three bricks? Uh, materials. Level three bricks, I simply wouldn't be able to make anyway. You need steel to make level three bricks. So... 
there is a zero possibility for your first batch of steel that you could even do level three. Um, because your pounder caps, your pounder caps in your pulverizer need to be made of steel to crush the last material for tier three bricks. But I can show you. Um, brick. So refractory tier twos require ovaline, which I don't have. And then refractory tier three. Where's the unfired threes? Here. Required a crushed ilmenite. Crushed ilmenite, um, you can only crush with steel powder caps. So it's uh, a sort of chicken and the egg. Situation where you can't, uh, you can't have it until you have steel. Here, buddy. If I don't have a lantern, I'll just take this one. Yoink. The green stuff's hard to find. Yeah, it can be. Because it doesn't show up um, on density searches. So it's, uh, it's, it is tricky. You are right. I have the scythe on me. Perfect. So we just need a little bit more grass to be able to fire up the remaining pit kilns for the remaining blocks. And the charcoal's done. Yeah, I'm only I can only work on one thing at a time, guys. Come on. Should be obvious. The thing is, I would say the refractory bricks are slightly more important because I do have some charcoal already, so I can get the process started with the charcoal that I have. I can't get the process started without actually completing the furnace. So one is more important than the other. With that said, uh, I can't do anything without actual iron ingots. So that's another thing that I'll need first. That's where I'm headed as soon as I get everything refueled and fired. And fortunately, I know exactly where iron is, because we already have a established iron mine. So that that will be pretty pretty straightforward. Some of these are flowers. Flowers and grass kind of look the same when they're all dead in the winter. Some of the flowers. I mean, obviously, some don't. Like, cow parsley is, still looks like cow parsley. I think this should be enough. I didn't actually get a count of how many remaining pit kilns are unbuilt. The depth of the charcoal pit does not affect the amount that you get. So the way it works is each layer of firewood, for each piece of firewood that you have, I'll phrase it like this, for each piece of firewood that you have, you have a certain percent chance that that firewood turns into charcoal. And then all of the charcoal that you generate gets dropped to the bottom from gravity. So the depth of your pit kilns do not improve the chance that firewood becomes charcoal. So for instance, here or here, I just got luckier on the right side that more of my firewood became charcoal than I did on the left side. 
depth had no nothing to do with it. So it's easy to think, oh, just have a one by one by like giant totem pole. Um, but the total amount of charcoal on average will not be, you won't benefit from doing like a totem pole like that. There's no advantage. So any dimension, um, any dimension charcoal kiln has no advantage over other dimensions. There is no like ideal. It's just however much you want to put in up into an extent. It can become so big that it is too big. But I think the max size is something ridiculous, like 14 by 14 by 14. So this is the remaining refractory books I need. We're very, very close to actually having a fully functioning furnace. Would I consider breaking over some preserved fruit? No. Uh, the reason is um, there are things to do in this game which you need hit points for. Like going into caves or dungeons. Um, so the fruit is reserved for when I need to go do those things. And until I needed to go do those things, it'd be a waste to get a ways to, uh, to, to to use you know if I had a massive supply of fruit I might consider it but I don't I have enough fruit for like a few meals preserved and it would add maybe a few hit points. And I don't need those hit points to go like iron mining. How far away we are from dungeons? Well, it depends on the extent of the dungeons. I could go into dungeons with bronze armor. The thing is, if I go down into depths, I would very quickly run into enemies, tier three plus enemies, that would become very dangerous for me to fight. And dying in dungeons that are far away from home is a really good way to like lose all your gear so the wiser approach is to likely um, wait until you've got some sort of steel armor instead so that you can just not have to die essentially so that's what I've been waiting on. I've been waiting to do it smart, not to rush it. So that's refractory materials, and this is... Charcoal materials. And that box is empty, that box is empty. So filling this up again uh, is definitely going to be enough charcoal for the steel process. I got uh, about a hundred from the last burn. And you need a total of... Um, actually, how much total charcoal? I think 160 for the whole process. Something... Uh, 168. One batch of steel will use 168 pieces of charcoal. So, yeah. Having roughly 200 is uh, is fine. So, let's fill this baby up and fire it up, and then we can go do the other stuff. The 
The mine is not safe from drifters now. Uh, especially in the current patch. It used to be, but it is no longer. So it used to be that um, that placed that placed uh, uh, stone chunks would block drifter spawns, but they patched that out. So the game has changed uh, since I went into the iron mine and because of those changes I'm going to have to uh, go there prepared to fight. Right. Just for you people with OCD. You're welcome. Oh, that was... Yeah, actually, this is... Oh, I need firewood. I'm stupid. I was like, why isn't this working? Yeah, that's the wrong material, idiot. Uh, Alright, <clears throat> back to cutting down trees. Or maybe before we do that, um, not starving to death. Seems like a good idea. Thank you for tuning in to Vintage Story, which originally streamed live on Twitch February 8th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. But please keep in mind, I've asked for no backseating, so if you could respect that, that would be great. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams, as well as a link to Twitch. And if you'd like to join my online gaming community, it also has a link to Discord, and the link to that can also be found in the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you in next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell.